That feels weird, but I'll allow it. When Mysterio revealed my identity, my entire life got screwed up. I was wondering if maybe you could make it so that he never did. Welcome back, everyone. This is my new Spider-Man No Way Home video for Spider-Man's new black suit. Based on some of the leaked trailer footage, we know how he gets the suit and what's going on with it. We also got a brand new scene of Dr. Octopus getting an Iron Man upgrade to his octopus arms, like Iron Man technology combined with his octopus arms. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The Eternals movie is out this weekend, so we're doing a giveaway for movie tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave all your predictions for Spider-Man No Way Home on the video. I'll talk about Spider-Man's black suit first, then I'll talk about Dr. Octopus using Iron Man technology. But Spider-Man is wearing this new black suit in a couple of the trailer scenes. First, when he's running through what looks like one of the feast shelters with his mask off and everyone pointing him through, like helping him find a path or find a villain that he's trying to chase or just escape from the police before they can catch him. The second scene is later when he's fighting Electro and Sandman. There could be other Sinister Six villains during this fight scene, but the only ones visible in the trailer are Electro and Sandman. Like you see the yellow lightning combined with the dust that's slowly rising up, forming into a face here, and Spider-Man sort of cowering down here in the bottom right corner of the frame, trying to shield himself from everything. The black suit itself is just being called the black and gold suit on all the merchandise, so that's probably its official name, even if nobody actually calls it that during the movie. The fingertips are still the same red and black as the newer advanced suit from Spider-Man Far From Home. That's the red and black Steve Ditko inspired suit. They're just calling that the advanced suit. You've also probably seen some promos of the black suit where Spider-Man is wearing special magical looking Doctor Strange gauntlets. Like the way they wrap around his arms here seem exactly the same as the design of the bandages that are wrapped around Doctor Strange's costume, the gauntlets that he wears. They're cloth looking gauntlets, but they're still kind of like gauntlets even though the ones Spider-Man is wearing are gold, as if somehow those are part of the enchantment that Doctor Strange lays on Spider-Man that allows him to temporarily use magic. Like you see the suit laced with all this blue energy magic, like he's using it as a shield, he's using it to lace his webbing. So we have to make the obvious comparisons to the anti-shock costume and the anti awk costume from Spider-Man PS4 and the Miles Morales Uptown Pride costume. It looks exactly like that. And the whole notion of Spider-Man wearing black suits, still waiting for that Spider-Man symbiote saga that they teased with the Spider-Man vs. Venom movie in the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. But here's the funny thing about the black suit. Like everybody has all these crazy theories about how he gets it, how he uses it, what the technology is, how it works. They're doing all these cool things with it, giving Spider-Man magic basically for at least a little while. But here's the thing, the black suit isn't actually a totally new suit, at least based on this leaked trailer footage. It seems like it's technically still the advanced suit, the red and black one. If you saw that leaked trailer footage recently before Sony took it down, the footage depicts this random person just running up to Spider-Man on the street after he stopped a criminal like he's a Mysterio supporter and just tosses a bunch of paint or something, some giant fluid on Spider-Man's advanced suit. So it seems like Spider-Man literally just takes the suit off and turns it inside out and it's black and gold on the inner layer. Like this is what the advanced suit looks like on the inside. And I think that's why even though most of the suit has this really cool black and gold design, like all the gold running all through it, the fingertips are still the exact same red. Because red kind of clashes with black and gold in a bad way. Like why would he have a black and gold suit but weird looking red fingertips? I think they're the same red color as the advanced suit because they're literally the same red hand pieces from the advanced suit, just flipped inside out. So when he's using magic here in whichever fight this winds up being, the Doctor Strange gauntlets seem like the only actual brand new piece of costume, brand new piece of the suit that he's wearing. Practically the only reason why Spider-Man would be using Doctor Strange magic, as cool as it is, would be as an upgrade to help him match whatever the villain's abilities are. Like you have all these Sinister Six villains that are getting their own upgrades during the movie who are just way too much for him to handle on his own. Usually that's the reason Spider-Man gets his new suits or builds his new suits, to help guard against whatever weakness his previous suits had against their abilities. As for the whole Dr. Octopus Iron Man upgrades to his octopus arms, if you noticed in all the Dr. Octopus scenes they released last week, I did a bunch of videos for them, so I'll link them below in the video description. They're all taken from that big bridge fight scene that they keep hyping on the George Washington Bridge where he's in the Iron Spider costume just getting thrashed by Dr. Octopus. And it looks like he basically destroys the Iron Spider suit with his arms. So RIP Iron Spider suit. Press F in the chat to pay respects. But a couple days after all those Empire scenes and previews dropped, they released a totally different preview of him, also from that fight, but with red and gold Iron Man looking octopus arms. So at some point in the fight, the arms go from the old color, like the exact same arms from Spider-Man 2, to the Iron Man version. 
And the big theory is that because the arms are sentient, they have the will of their own. You see Dr. Octopus kind of fighting them for control of his own mind at times. Something in my head. He's right. Listen. Listen to me now. It was a big plot point during Spider-Man 2. During their fight on the bridge, when he's got Spider-Man dead to rights, at some point, he's able to use his octopus arms to destroy the Iron Spider suit and take the nanites that form the suit, integrating them with his old arms. Like, during the middle of the fight, he takes Spider-Man's Iron Spider nanites and uses them to upgrade his octopus arms. And it's a huge, deep-cut Easter egg for the very first Iron Man movie back in 2008. I mentioned this a little while ago, too, in one of my other videos, but some of you may remember this reference if you've been following the making of the Marvel movies since back in Phase 1. Originally, back in 2007-2006, when they were first figuring out Iron Man's origin story in the MCU for that first movie, Kevin Feige and the Marvel people initially wanted to connect Iron Man's backstory to Spider-Man on a fundamental level early on, Spider-Man characters. And they were going to do it by saying that Iron Man was the one who designed Dr. Octopus's arms in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. Because you have to remember, when they were developing the first Iron Man movie, it was around the time Spider-Man 3 had just come out. So we were still in Tobey Maguire Spider-Man era. It was before Sony rebooted into the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man franchise. But this is Kevin Feige trying to connect the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies to the MCU at the very beginning. And if you didn't realize, early on, Kevin Feige was a producer on those Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. So he was working with Sony while they were making those from the very beginning. But because Sony was trying to reboot the franchise with Andrew Garfield, they said, no way, not going to happen. We're not going to let you use all these Dr. Octopus plot points. So Marvel just had to delete that idea from the first Iron Man movie. But I guess what would have happened is that we would have had an Otto Octavius Easter egg at some point during the film. Like Dr. Octopus wouldn't have starred in Iron Man 1. They would have just mentioned him. So by having Dr. Octopus use Iron Man tech in Spider-Man No Way Home now in present day, it's kind of a way for them to bring a version of that concept back, like linking Dr. Octopus's technology to Iron Man. And because all the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies are heavily influenced by the Iron Man character, you kind of expect a few Iron Man Easter eggs in here somewhere. It's also a really easy way to make Dr. Octopus seem like he's way more badass and way more of a threat to Spider-Man. Like, I'm going to take that really cool suit of yours and make it my cool suit. Speaking of Tobey Maguire crossover, I also just did a big video for that Willem Dafoe Green Goblin first look in Spider-Man No Way Home for what he's actually going to look like when he shows up. I'll add a link for that down in the description below. During that video, I also explained how it's even possible for him to still be alive because we have the pumpkin bombs, we have his laugh, but people are like, wait a minute, didn't he die on Tobey Maguire's Earth before Dr. Octopus showed up? So if Dr. Octopus is here, how did Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin come back to life? It's all about the way Doctor Strange's spell works and pulls things from across the multiverse from space and time. Not just from alternate places in the multiverse, but from alternate time periods in the multiverse. And if we're talking about black suits, as for Tom Holland actually wearing the symbiote, the way that Andy Serkis was talking about the Spider-Man vs. Venom movie, it sounds like he doesn't think that it's going to happen till after at least one more different Venom solo movie. So I would say at least like three years before we see Spider-Man vs. Venom. But that would be the movie where we actually see him get the symbiote for the first time. And then after that movie, we'll probably see the symbiote start using the classic Spider-Man symbol on his chest. Speaking of multiverse, we also just got the Morbius trailer with Easter eggs that are seemingly used in a way that don't totally make sense from all the different Spider-Man franchises and the Venom movies. Half the city wants to kill you. We haven't had anything this good since that thing in San Francisco. Wants to control you. Hey, uh, Dr. Mike, you and I should stay in touch. Who the hell are you, man? I am Venom. I'm just kidding, it's Dr. Michael Morbius. We have the MCU Michael Keaton Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming, the Tom Holland MCU Spider-Man Mysterio murder plot points, but it's the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man costume, and it's the Tobey Maguire Daily Bugle mentioning Rhino and Black Cat villains, but we also have the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man version of Oscorp, despite the fact we know it's the Willem Dafoe version of Green Goblin from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies inside Spider-Man No Way Home. You just have to picture the Sony executives having the craziest meeting you've ever seen trying to figure this stuff all out. How many Easter eggs do we want for Spider-Man movies? Yes. But what's going to be happening this weekend? Because the Eternals movie is out in theaters, my Eternals post credit scene video will post tomorrow, so be sure to see the movie when you have the chance. There's a bunch of stuff to talk about. My full movie breakdown, Easter eggs, and a bunch of bonus videos will also post later in the weekend. 
so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss anything. We'll get a new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer in another couple weeks as well too. Everyone click here for my Eternals video about how Thanos saved the Avengers and Earth from the Celestials, and click here for my full Morbius trailer breakdown in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.